In this video, we're going to go over the process for setting up the DHCP failover and high availability features on Windows Server 2022. So far, I've got uh, my main domain controller, which has got DHCP installed and configured with one scope and a couple of settings and a lease reservation. To set up the failover, uh, you will need to log on to your second server and install the DHCP role. To do that, just follow the normal role and feature wizard. Select the DHCP server and the management tools, and then just hit next through the windows and then install. Once the installation is finished, um, you just need to authorize the DHCP server to Active Directory. Once that has been authorized, just need to double check that the service is running, which it is, and that's all that's needed on the secondary server. Back on the primary server, if you go to the IPv4 scope, right click and go to configure failover. This is where all the settings are made. So you want to select either the scopes you want to uh, configure the failover for or select all. Now you want to select your partner server. So in my case, it's DC02. Check. This will just check it has communication. And it does. So what you can do is you can give it a relationship name. I'm just going to leave this as default, but you can call it whatever you want. For maximum client lead time, I just leave this as standard. This is the length of time that if the one of the servers goes unavailable, the other server will take over the primary roles. Uh, but one hour, I just leave that as fine as standard. Now there are two modes when setting up DHCP failover. You can have it low balanced across both servers, or you can do a hot standby. For low balancing, it's pretty simple. You just tell it the two servers and then give it how much of the load you want it to give. So generally 50-50 split. Or you can do a hot standby. For hot standby, it basically all of the requests go to the primary partner server and that server deals with all of the DHCP requests but if for any reason that server goes unavailable and can no longer be communicated with the standby server the standby server then takes control and starts dishing out the DHCP leases in most instances the load balancing is perfectly fine uh, that's the one that I always use I don't recall ever actually using the hot standby feature state switch out switch over interval 60 minutes is fine there's no real need to enable that and the uh, message authentication this is just so you can give it a secret just set that up to whatever you want and then hit next this will just confirm the settings and then hit finish and this will uh, uh, create the failover partner and replicate all of the settings uh, configuration failover successful so now if we go back to the secondary server and then refresh that scope should appear and it has and it should take over the address pool settings it's pulled over the, any leases that we have we only had the one it's pulled over the reservations with the reservation settings and any scope options that we had to configure if there's any policies that would pull it through as well now if you need to make additional changes to the scope now that it is replicated you can do it on either server but you have to right click the scope and uh, replicate the scope if you make any changes so example if we go to uh, scope options and we change the well actually let's go configure options let's say we add a time server we'll just give it a 
the domain controller. So that has been added to DC02. But if we go back to DC01, that option is not here, no matter how many times I refresh. So what you've got to do is, once you've made the change, if you just right click either on the scope or on IPv4 and replicate the scopes, this will go through the process and then it will push any changes that have been made to its partner server. So if I refresh this now, that's added that time server back to this main scope. And that is the basics for setting up a DHV failover scope.